Good morning and thank you for joining us for this year's Virtual Royal Welsh. This morning we'll be giving an update on HCC's Stock Plus project. Stock Plus project is one element of the Red Meat Development Programme. This is an animal health focused project aiming to increase the level of engagement associated with proactive health planning on beef and sheep farms across Wales. By working with farmers and vets we hope to increase the level of engagement associated with proactive animal health planning. This will ultimately help Wales lead the way in terms of animal welfare, sustainability and efficiency. The project aims to work with up to 500 beef and sheep farmers across Wales. To date we have 260 farms engaged with the Stock Plus project as well as 38 different veterinary practices. So how does the Stock Plus project work? Each farm is engaged with the project for a period of three years. During this three year period each farm receives a number of Stock Plus vet visits. During the initial vet visit the vet identifies a number of animal health priorities that need addressing. Tailored and bespoke animal health advice is provided for each of the animal health priorities identified by the vet during the initial visit. By working with the advice that the vet has provided, we are aiming to increase productivity and overall profitability on farm. We will now be discussing in a little bit more detail these animal health priorities. Looking through the results, we've identified that lameness and worm control were the top two animal health priorities for sheep. The top two animal health priorities for cattle were fertility and infectious disease, predominantly BVD and yonis. Our Stock Plus Vet Ambassadors, Claire Jones and Alan Evans, will now be discussing and providing advice on these animal health issues. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you today about two key main issues that affect UK sheep flocks um, throughout the UK. And it's the two main things that we tend to talk about on Stop Plus visits and health planning with farmers. So I'm going to talk about lameness in sheep and I'm also going to talk about internal parasites in sheep. Um, before we start, I just want to say this is by no means a comprehensive guide, it's just a whistle stop tour and a few key points just to kind of steer you in the right direction to start that conversation with your Stop Plus vet. Okay. So, uh, starting with internal parasites, it's very important to make sure you don't just treat your flock as one entity. You have to split them down into the different components, so ewes, lambs, rams, ewe lambs. You can't apply a one-size-fits-all strategy to these because essentially the stresses on those, lamp those animals at different times of the year is going to be different. So again, it's, it's important to make sure that you break things down. Okay, so we're going to start with worming in adult ewes. So generally speaking, once ewes reach sort of first tupping season, their immunity is actually very good. So generally speaking, they don't need worming regularly throughout the year. Um, however, that doesn't mean we don't necessarily need to monitor their worm burden. So we tend to recommend faecal egg counting ewes for worms um, six weeks or four to six weeks pre-lambing and pre-tupping. And the reason for this is obviously pre-tupping time, we want them in peak condition. So they're more likely to perform well and conceive. Um, and in pre-lambing time, we basically just want to get ahead of the game and combat something called the periparture and egg rise. And basically what that is in a nutshell is, as I said, most of the time, you are very good at suppressing that worm burden in their bodies. However, when they're pregnant, as the further through their pregnancy they get, when the lambs are really drawing on them in that last trimester, it pulls on the ewes' bodies and basically the worm burdens can then start to creep up. And although that might not have an actual big effect on the ewes themselves, what it can mean is that they start chucking out lots of eggs onto the pasture. And that has a knock-on effect for them for your lambs when they start grazing. So basically by faecal egg counting the ewes pre-lambing time, we're basically making sure we get ahead of the game and stopping that from happening. Again, it's really important to make sure that you do your twins and your singles and your triplets separately because the tells on the bodies of those individual groups is going to be different. So twins and triplets are going to be under a greater stress than your singles. So again, it's important not just to blanket treat and to break things down to make sure you're, you're definitely working out what's going on in those different management groups. When else would we recommend faecal egg counting ewes? Any other time of the year you're lo they're looking poor, best to run a faecal egg count just to rule out worms. Okay, so lambs. So lambs are born with no immunity at all. They don't have any immunity at all to worms. And therefore they need faecal egg counting every four to six weeks throughout the grazing period from two weeks of age. Um, and again, really important to break it down into singles versus twins because twins are likely to have a slightly ha harder time than your single lambs. So again, really important not just to blanket treat, just make, make sure you work out what's going on in those different gangs. The first worms that lambs tend to see in the grazing season is nematodirus. 
and that's the one that survives, the eggs survive over the pasture, over the winter, and then they're triggered to hatch when the weather then thaws. And then we get that massive, uh, great big uh, nematodirus mass hatch. So that's what we can help you to predict, um, along with NADIS forecasting. Um, if you communicate with your vet, they can tell you when they think that's going to happen. After that initial nematodirus rise, we tend to then get roundworms throughout the rest of the grazing season when the weather starts to warm up. Um, so again, that's why it's so important to stay on top of that because the last thing you want is for these lambs to get a check on their growth or to start having clinical disease from these worms because in big enough numbers, they really will start to make them feel very unwell, get lots of scour. Um, they can go quite lethargic and obviously it can kill them as well, plus leave them wide open to other infections too. So it's really important to make sure that you do regular fecal leg counting and discuss the results with your vet to make sure they can tell you or advise you what drench to use and when. And that's important because drench variation is really, really critical to avoiding resistance on your farm. And for more information about resistance, I suggest you talk to your vet because that's a topic in itself. So make sure you get communicating with your vet and get some fecal leg counting done. Again, not a comprehensive guide. We're just gonna talk about the two main types of lameness in UK sheep flocks. We're gonna talk about foot rot and cod. Um, so we're going to start with foot rot. Foot rot is a bacterial infection. It's caused by Diclobacter nodosis, and there's 10 strains of that bacteria in the UK. It's very contagious and it lives in the environment for up to 30 days, but it doesn't tend to like cold conditions. So we don't tend to see it below 10 degrees, which is why we tend to see it more from spring around to autumn. But remember, indoor lambing sheds are different. They're going to be above 10 degrees. So certainly if you're lambing indoors over the winter, you could see this um, earlier than the spring. Um, it has that characteristic smell. Anyone who's ever got foot rot on their hands uh, will remember it forever. It absolutely stinks. It does cause the foot to literally rot um, and it tends to start from the bottom of the foot, causes a lot of overgrowth and sloughing um, and causes that horrible kind of um, pussy nature to the foot and it makes them incredibly lame. So that basically affects their performance because if they're very, very lame, they're not going to want to walk. Uh, they're going to lose condition. They're not going to graze. They're not going to rear the lambs. They're not going to stay in lamb and they're potentially not going to get in lamb, so it affects the whole cycle. So it's very, very important to make sure that you identify this and treat it quickly. Okay, the next form of lameness is COD, so contagious ovine digital dermatitis, and again, does what it says on the tin, it's very contagious, so that's the one to remember, but this one will also spread between cattle and sheep, so if you've got a problem in your cattle, remember it can spread to your sheep in terms of your housing facilities, we make sure that you're disinfecting if you know you've got a problem in the cattle. Um, and equally, it's important to remember if you're grazing ewe lambs away from home at wintering on dairy farms, and dairy farms are particularly prevalent with cod. Um, so if you know you're grazing a dairy farm, it's very important to isolate your ewe lambs when you get them home to make sure they haven't brought that infection home with them. Again, this is a bacterial infection. It's caused by a spira sheet bacteria. Um, and it can affect animals at any time of the year. So it's not, this one's not weather dependent. It will survive in the environment um, at any, any temperature. Um, so we tend to see it all times of the year. So uh, this one tends to start at the coronary band, so it starts at the top of the foot, and um, we sort of tend to see like, little ulcers and red lesions all around the coronary band, and then that spreads down and it causes the hoof wall to separate off, leaving that really red, raw um, internal part of the foot. Okay, so tackling lameness successfully in a flock. Um, so we basically tend to look at the five-point plan, and this was a five-point plan, which is a holistic approach um, devised by MSD alongside Vets in Practice, which basically looks at working towards tackling lameness from multiple different areas. So it's not just about uh, focusing on one aspect, it's about treating it um, from a multi-targeted um, sort of approach. So we'll really quickly run through it. Again, something that you need to talk to your vet about in more detail to work out how to do it properly. Uh, so the five point plan looks at five different aspects. So the first aspect is culling. So this basically just focuses on making sure that um, you're identifying ewes that have been lame. We tend to advise farmers to put a cable tag through ear tags so that they can quickly see whether they've had a lameness problem um, or marking them in some other way. And if you have a ewe that's lame more than twice in the same grazing season, she needs to go. This can result, result in quite high culling um, culling policy in the first couple of years. However, if you can be strict, it will help you get on top of it quicker. And uh, that should then drop off dramatically after the first couple of years. Okay, so the next aspect is treating. So this is the second point of the plan. And this basically involves identifying the problem with your vet. So making sure that you get foot rot or cod identified, or you could have a mixed infection. And making sure that you're identifying those clinical cases as quickly as possible, rather than when you're actually seeing them hopping lame. And you're using the correct antibiotics and the correct anti-inflammatory to get on top of it, according to what your vet is advising you. No trimming, um, so that's one that's now uh, advised for all forms of lameness is that you shouldn't be trimming the foot right back to the raw flesh because it exposes more bacteria and can aid in spread and also delay healing. 
Okay, for our third point is quarantine. So this basically looks at trying to make sure you're not bringing it into your flock. So you should be quarantining incoming stock for at least four weeks to allow those clinical signs to emerge. Um, and that also accounts for bringing ewe lambs home from wintering as well. So remember, they are technically incoming stock. Um, and thinking about perhaps vaccinating incoming animals with foot vax. So the fourth point is avoiding. So uh, this basically looks at trying to make sure you don't spread it further within your actual flock. So if you've got the problem, making sure you're tackling it correctly. Um, so making sure that you're not spreading it handling um, or gathering, avoiding poaching at gateways and that sort of thing. And it's really important when tackling lamers that you set up a, a separate flock for the lame sheep so that they're well away from the rest of the flock so they're not spreading it continuously to other animals. Okay, and the last point is vaccination. Um, so this basically looks at trying to stimulate immunity in your flock by vaccinating the foot backs. Um, so that's for incoming animals. We're also looking at uh, tackling your whole flock as well if you have got a serious problem, particularly foot rot. Um, so this is again something to talk to your vet about to get um, a better advice about that. Um, so really when tackling lameness, it's communication again is the key. Working with your vet, um, getting them on board to help you tackle it quicker can um, basically help to stop spreading even further and help you get uh, your lameness problems under, under wraps quicker. Our project is Angos to Yoni Zurin or Clever De Hintis in Poini Fermer and Gumbrimuya. A fourth gore e well does my Yoni stach here and the Viches, you can read sample guard. Um, be now my language for Bobol a bit gore in aid, you will mean no a in our health schemes, Margohanor Bobol and Redeg. Um, who name is a board pop beth dross, doy 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 and cal e sample. Uh, a wyd yn chi gweld, chi gweld y sefyllfa chi arno a mynd o fy na. Uh, yn anffodus, uh, dyw'r test gwaed ddim cant y cant, uh, so chi gallu cael gwartheg sy'n positif, um, uh, ddim yn dangos lan ar y, ar, ar y profion cyntaf, ond yn dangos lan mewn cwbl fy nyddeu wrth bod nhw'n hynach. Um, I gadw'r reolaeth ar Ionis yn gyntaf, mae'r chi gweld bant o Ionis i gyda chi. Um, but then in Gwaid, Osta Dumon Ri Bachs Dachi, uh, and Amal was there, my worth just Kagware do Dahin. Uh, my wife would call in Aid Dangos, um, he did not a da positive sin yach, and Amal knew what there, your quartex sin, a cosibaco probleme, the newer a cloth, near a si, uh, dim and da taru morda. Um, so, and Amal, get a Ri Bach, in Gwaid, Oshigasi, Jack Kagware do. I gadw reolaeth hefyd, mae rai neud yn siŵr um, bod chi'n cadw uh, uh, biosecurity da, um, gyda uh, rheolaeth biosecurity ni gyd yn uh, eitha cyfarwydd gyda, gyda nawr. Um, a peth arall hefyd, os i chi yn uh, prynu yn y gwartheg mewn, yn uh, i prynu taro mewn, uh, prynu o fiches i yn rhan o'r uh, health schemes yn, uh, neu os chi ffeilio yn yna, um, but then he and Mina Provion Guard of the Guartheg Kinney Prenny. My project is done goes here with uh, Inor Probleme, uh, Sinecosi Probleme, Fruit Rondeb, and Vige Suckler, Ew Probleme, Gidar Taru, uh, my lot to Deiru, uh, the more fruit on a bit the Leno board. Um, so, ni widi Carl Saul Person uh, and a project e uh, edrych ar y taru uh, a uh, checkoi roedd Lundeb nhw um, wel, dros fis cyn bod y taru yn fy mewn i wneud yn siŵr os mae'r problem uh, mae siawn si brynu taru arall. Uh, problem arall mae'r teirw yn gallu achosi yw problemau lloia. Uh, mae'r problem lloia yn achosi lot o problemau. Uh, dim hyd yn o, dim just y problemau um, amlwg, fel um, chwch chi chi uh, colli'r llo, uh, colli'r fywch, uh, a'r costau sy'n mynd gyda hyn, ond um, mae lot o problemau yn digwydd ar ôl um, i fywch cael uh, trwbl dod â llo. Uh, yn aml, uh, mae'r gallu fywch hyn fod yn dost, um, i wallai fydd hi'n frwnt, um, a mae hwn yn meddwl bydd hi ddim yn dod i wasod um, a gyda'r problemau gyd sy'n dod gyda hyn. Um, chi'n gweld y problemau hyn uh, uh, mwy a mwy yn trysedu lloi cyntaf um, a mae un ffarm i'n mynd i um, bydd ni wedi wneud 
yw defnyddio mwy o AI. Um, so mae'r um, trysiedi llai cyntaf yn cael eu syncronizo um, a wedyn ni'n defnyddio AI a edrych am deirw gyda EBVs uh, llai anrwydd. Um, a wedyn mae hwn yn neud yn siŵr uh, bod ddim gormod y problemau llai ag yr trysiedi yn aml chi'n ni gael rhyw fath o broblem gyda rhai o'r trysiedi. Uh, a mae neud yn siŵr wedyn bod Rhe'n yn lloia yn mwy rhwydd a wedyn dyn ni ddim yn cael problemau ar ôl lloia a maen nhw lawer mwy dybygol o ddylatarw ar ôl lloia yn gloiach ac yn mwy rhwydd. Wrth eich modd yn rhedeg i ma, sy'n lloia am bennaf yn y gwenwyn. Trwy weithio'n agos gyda'r nilfeddig, fel Alun Evan, dyn ni wedi dod i ben na gwella ffrwglondeb y ddigrys dyffyn. Trwy bod y gwartheg yn lloia yn mewn cymnod drach, a hefyd mae dyffyn y tai o gwartheg gwag yma. Felly bennaf gyfrifol am hyn, mae Alun yn dyma sy'n llacio da pwy ddo cyn bod ni'n troi'n arwyn iawn, sy'n neud i'n gwrdd bod y gwartheg yn ffeithlon iawn, a fos o dwy problem, ni'n gallu gael sortio yn y fath yn ffi. Yn ogystal â hyn, dyn ni'n cymryd i'r gwaed o'r canran o'r gwartheg yn weithio'n ddynnus. Dyn ni'n neud yn cwrdd bod lefelau'r maen yn fennau yn gywir. A'r ffeithio i ni'n gallu'r sbotwyr yma trwy roi bwl y ffyrdd neu rhywbeth i'n gael cywiro'r problem. Camau bach yw'r hyn, ond maen nhw'n camau bwysig iawn sy'n bolygu mwy o elw i'r ddichas ac i'r ffarm yn ei gymanbrwydd. Thank you for joining us for today's Stock Plus update. Further information on the Stock Plus project can be found on HCC's website. If you do have any questions, please contact us in the office.